So the missing uh, component from the slide that I presented earlier then is this virtual network that's needed for, let's say, you're deploying virtual appliances, repeating the process of copying a virtual appliance image, instantiating using Amazon EC2 or Nimbus or Eucalyptus or what have you, and somehow having a virtual network coming together to uh, put these virtual machines in the same logical uh, network address space. So how does that work? Uh, there's no single way um, that you can go about uh, creating a virtual network. And there are basically two approaches that I'm going to uh, generalize here that you can think about uh, in the context of cloud computing. So if you look at uh, the example that I've been talking about, we have virtual machines running somewhere and you'd like for them to be connected by a virtual network. So what I'm showing in this slide are virtual machines uh, with network devices and they're connected by some network fabric. That could be a local air network or that could be the public internet. And there are basically two approaches uh, that you can think about uh, from, a, from a top level and they're not exclusive, um, but um, they can be applied uh, in, in, um, in conjunction. So one would be to use a virtualized fabric. So let's say your network fabric may be a, a local area network that uh, you can actually program with virtualization primitives in it. So that's the example on the bottom where you can go inside the routers and switches and virtualize the fabric itself. And that's possible if it's within your data center typically. Now the other approach is when you don't have access uh, to programming these devices, let's say the network fabric now is the public internet and you're not able to go and program uh, routers and switches in the public internet to accomplish your virtualization goals, you can still virtualize uh, by doing uh, the processing at the endpoints. Could be all the way uh, in the node itself or they might be uh, uh, intermediate nodes that act as routers in this example. So one example of virtualization that's, that's quite common in, in enterprises is VLAN, a uh, virtual LAN, uh, where uh, the administrator of the network can go inside the VLAN switch and program it. Um, and the kind of programming that goes on, uh, the virtualization uh, primitives that go on in these switches are quite simple. You're basically looking at a matching tags, a VLAN tag uh, from an incoming packet and moving it uh, to the outgoing port according to um, uh, its VLAN tag. So this can be done quite efficiently uh, in uh, hardware that supports this type of virtualization. Now, uh, this works well within a single environment, but again, if you're trying to federate or if you're trying to connect uh, to provide cloud and capabilities, then you're looking at a shared environment. You know, the internet is on your way. So you don't have control of networking resources. You cannot program again routers. And you, in many cases, may not even be able to access underlying physical resources um, with privileges. You may be able to get a virtual machine on Amazon as root, but you're not able to program the physical machine that's hosting that uh, VM um, as, as a regular uh, user. So one approach to deal with this problem again is to use uh, virtual private networks and end-to-end -end virtualization using tunneling uh, over shared infrastructure. And one example of uh, this type of virtualization is one that many of you may already be uh, familiar with and use, uh, let's say, when you're traveling or in a car away from your uh, academic uh, network, uh, you can use a virtual private network client to connect back to your uh, uh, institution. So this doesn't require control over the public internet um, resources. And what you do then is at the endpoints, you take a message and you virtualize uh, you create the perception of a virtual network by, uh, or a private network in addition, by encrypting a message and encapsulating in a different protocol and looking up where the endpoint is for your message and sending it over the um, uh, internet encrypted and encapsulated. 
as far as the applications on both ends, this can be done in a way that they perceive these uh, two endpoints to be on the same logical network. So, uh, if we look at how these uh, approaches in general work, and, and to draw a parallel to machine virtualization, which again is at the core of infrastructure as a service and cloud computing, if you look at what a virtual machine monitor does, it basically looks at instructions that a virtual machine, a virtual appliance is issuing, traps instructions that are privileged, and emulate the behavior of those instructions in the context of the virtual machine that issued it. And that's what's behind uh, the inner workings of a virtual machine in general. Uh, in the case of a virtual network, uh, the events that are intercepted are the messages that are sent or received uh, by a, a virtual network device. And the virtual network needs to be able to take these messages and emulate the behavior of sending and receiving messages in the context of the virtual network that uh, a resource is bound to. Now, uh, virtual networks can be, um, uh, can come in multiple, in, in, in different ways. And one of the uh, criteria for uh, different virtual network technologies is at what layer uh, is the virtual, uh, the network virtualized. Uh, so basically, if you look at TCP IP, uh, typically you're looking at either layer two virtualization or layer three virtualization, data link layer, or network layer. Advantage of layer two virtualization is it supports any protocol that's uh, on top of data link. So that's not restricted to IP, but it can run other protocols. Uh, layer three virtualization supports IP and it's tied to IP, uh, but that is sufficient for the majority of applications that uh, people seem to be uh, interested on. That tends not to be a, uh, a major constraint, at least for applications that are in use today. 